We're good. <laughs> We're in business. Sorry about that. I've never had that happen before. So uh, I had to update my OBS. And when I did, I went to click go live and it gave me an error message and I had to update my graphics driver, but we're good. Uh, me and Ski are here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rob Vito is working on getting into, uh, he's coming. Um, so let me just. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the chat is firing me up too. I, I, yeah, they're blaming you. 100% blaming you. It's okay. <laughs> I'll take the blame anyway. <laughs> yeah, so tell Rob, uh, you can tell him in a text that. The link I sent him in an email, if he clicks that, it asks for a password, basketball one, and it should uh, get right in. But um, okay. we can get started in the meantime without him. Uh, so, yep. first game up is Pacers at Pistons. One second here. Uh, so, the poll I ran before, I said, true or false, you are done betting the Utah Jazz for the season. 71% of you said true. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know how many people are going to be grabbing that plus 15 and a half at that one. Uh, so, we got Pacers minus 10 and a half, Pistons plus 10 and a half, pass. All right. So, here's the first game. Um, here we go. All right. So, Ski, I don't know if you I, – I uploaded a video and I went through this one. I, there's no way I will lay the 10 and a half, but honestly, that's where I'm leaning here. I'm leaning towards the Pacers. Um, Pistons have been running a faster pace recently, and the Pacers, when they play these teams that are down to play that game with them, they got an excellent yeah, they got an excellent number against the spread. They, but that being said, it's not very often they're laying a number like right. this. And like you always say, Pacers are one of those teams you're not trying to bet on them to win by 10 15 points if they can't consistently make stops which makes perfect sense so I'm putting Indiana minus 10 and a half up for myself but I very seriously doubt I will have a dollar on this when it tips surprisingly the Pacers are and there he goes uh surprisingly the Pacers are top 10 defensive rated team last five games but do we trust them to do this consistently is the question um I'll say this if there was one time that I would look to probably lay with the Pacers, I can understand this being the spot. Coming off of a loss as a favorite, that's a bounce-back spot. You have Pistons, third game in four nights, fourth game in six, and the Pistons just aren't trying to win games anyway. You can tell by uh, what they're doing with Cade. So I, I would only look towards the Pacers, but can my fingers push confirm minus 10 and a half? Uh, I don't know. I actually thought that you were going to say leading Detroit in this one. Uh, so we're both leaning Pacers minus 10 and a half here. Uh, Mr. Vino, we are, you didn't miss anything, by the way. We're on the first game. Um, and, we, and me and Ski both leaning towards Indiana minus 10 and a half. It doesn't sound like either of us are going to place a bet here. Uh, do you have any looks in this one? Well, I did early, guys, but I didn't play, and then I lost the number, and so I'm not involved. I looked for Indiana's team total little bounce back off of a bad offensive effort the other night against the poor defense that, as Ski mentioned, seems to be trying. Eh, we don't like to say trying, but they're they're not going all out to win games. Ping pong ball is more important at this point in time. So with that in mind, um, 120 and a half looked good as an opener. Missed it, lost it, and now 123. Kind of steep for me, guys. So I let it go. Um, didn't play either way. I could see a small look on Indiana, but um, I would have preferred playing the total at the earlier price, the team total at the earlier price. So if someone breaks into your house, puts a gun to your head, and said, play some yeah. bet on this game, you're saying Indiana minus 10 and a half. <laughs> the gun is at my head, Kyle. No. <laughs> the, the gun's at my head. I'm shopping as you say that to me, and I'm saying I'll go take Indiana team total over 122 and a half. It's the best price I can find. All right, cool. So let's type that on the screen. So again, he said if there's a gun to his head, so he's right. not saying go bet this. Um, mm -hmm. So Indiana team total over 122 and a half uh, would be Rob Vino's lead. Okay. So it kind of seems like we're all leaning towards the Indiana side. I mean, I, trust me, if there was an angle to get to Detroit plus 10 and a half, you guys know I'd be on it. Like, I love taking yeah. dogs like that, but I couldn't, I couldn't get there. It's the time of the year you have to be careful with these dirty dogs. Like, some of them are going to quit, and you just have to realize which ones those are. Absolutely. 56%, um, 23% uh, in favor of the Pacers. So the viewers are definitely leaning towards Indiana as well. Let's move on to game number two. Miami Cleveland and this is the one I'm waiting to hear what ski says uh so, so last night I said I want to get to the heat didn't pull the trigger 
I'm not holding a heat ticket. Um, so I won't go through everything I said last night, but basically I don't know where the points are going to come from, from Cleveland in this one. Um, Miami does a great job protecting the interior. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I don't know how Cleveland's going to get to the basket and score on the interior in this one. And the area where Miami's been a little more vulnerable is against jump shooters, against three-point shooting. But again, with no Dean Wade, no Mitchell, no Max Struess. I mean, there's a big chunk of, of Miami's, I mean, I'm sorry, Cleveland's three-point shooting missing from this game. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I want to get to Miami, but I don't know if I could trust the Heat offense to go on the road in Cleveland and put up points. I mean, we know Cleveland can play defense certainly at home, even though they've been streaky recently. So it's Heat or pass for me. Ski, if you if you make a compelling argument, I'll bet the Heat with you, but I don't even know what you're on here. Negative. Uh, I, I would look towards the other direction. I didn't bet it yet, but um, I, I don't think it's a Heat spot at all. For one, they're just as banged up, uh, missing what, Hero, Robinson, Love could be without both Bam and Butler tonight. They're both on the injury report. So they're just as banged up. It's the Heat's third game in four nights. I believe it's their fourth game in six nights too. And all of these games have been on the road. So I just think it's, it's not a great spot for the Heat. You have the Cavaliers um, at the house. I'll be more inclined to just lean that way. So, Ooh, a possible head-to-head -head here. Am I going to put my championship belt on the line here in the Miami Heat? Uh, well, we haven't. Neither one of us has bet this one. No, that doesn't sound like neither was <laughs> confident in it. Um, so, uh, Rob Vino, do you want to break the tie here against the spread? Before you get into what you would bet, if if you had to break the tie on where you're leaning against the spread, I would break it with the Miami side. Um, but again, like you might have mentioned earlier, Kyle, the the number's gone right three all the way down to one and a half. Now we're talking. If you're gonna bet Miami, you might as well play a money line. The chances of them losing by one aren't great. So as I say that, we can probably expect a 108-107 final. But um, I would think that Miami w would be the, the better side in this one. I just don't like, you know, even Cleveland is banged up as they were the other night. Um, pretty solid performance out of them. I, I, you know, Miami's known for playing with what they have and doing well with it. And Cleveland, not so much. So for that reason, I would probably tend to look at the Miami side. It's a game I didn't play either. Total at 204 and a half. Mm. Hard to, I, I agree with two schools of thought here. I agree with the school of thought that um, I think you brought up, Kyle, which says don't really know where the points are going to come from. And I also like the other side of the fence, which tells me that there's a ton of defense missing from this game and maybe in a up and down, little backup reserve type of game. You do get the 205. So when there's that much conflict, I don't like to play. I didn't play, but um, I guess the original question was, how do I split the tie? And I'd split it with Miami. Good answer. Great pick there. Uh, so yeah, I'd lean towards Miami as well. And, uh, and then another thing I forgot to mention is, um, so the fast break is also a pretty crucial part of Cleveland's offense. Donovan Mitchell towards the top of the league in transition points per game. So with no him, Fast break takes a hit for Cleveland. And also Miami's excellent at defending the fast break. Just to further my point of I don't know where's Cleveland scoring from. But if if Ski's going to counter with where's Miami scoring from, I kind of got nothing. <laughs> so so it, it's tough. Um, I guess I... The under, the under could be okay then, right? That's exactly what I was just going to say is I guess that makes sense for an under. But I would have to take... Let's look at pace. You know what? I have the things open right here. Why don't we They're both, both bottom 10 in pace last five games. Miami is 27 and nine to the under on the road, 20 and nine to the under as a dog. And Miami is a top five defensive rated team last five games and bottom five offensive rated team. Miami has went under seven straight. Seven straight unders for the Heat. I remember seeing that. Yeah, in the last 10 games, 24th and 21st in pace. In the last five games, 25th and 20th. So neither of these teams are running. I mean, maybe the under. Maybe I end up throwing a, a, a bet down on the under after this show. So, yeah, I can see that. Um, our 16 and 4, guys. Just to be exact real quick, 16 and 4 to the under 80% for Miami since the beginning of February. Um, it's a lot of games. 20 games, 16 unders, 80%. So, just want to play a flyer trend that's current. There it is. Yeah. 
And I'm a little worried about that 203 and a half. I'm kind of scarred about what happened last night in Charlotte (laughs) in the Orlando game. I got it at 204. I gave it out. Within an hour, it was 203 and a half. So it's the kind of thing where, like, I pushed, but most of my followers got hooked, which always sucks because you you can't celebrate if most of your people didn't get (laughs) it or else you're just an asshole. (laughs) Uh, Let's move on to the next one. Milwaukee at Boston. And this is just, man, this could have been a great game. And if Giannis was playing and the Celtics guys were going to be out there, which we still don't even really know on the Celtics side, I don't think. I thought this was going to be a really sharp spot to play the Celtics minus eight and a half. And I thought that number would draw some action in on the Bucs. And I, I would have felt comfortable on Boston at eight and a half. But with no Giannis and, and now it's at ten and a half. Let's see what these guys think. Uh, Rob, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, the knee-jerk reaction answer, Kyle, is teams without their star players cover. I mean, I'm on the wrong end of Denver again last night thinking that not only without the players for Minnesota, but the travel situation, six straight road games, come home. It's a back-to-back from road to home. You're four nights in Utah or whatever it was, and now you're back. It just was crazy, and you still can't get there with the team that supposedly has the better personnel. So, I mean, if you just illogically play NBA games, you could come up profitable in most cases. And illogically playing it would say, you know, no Giannis, let's play Milwaukee. You are getting the benefit of extra points here. Um, It's difficult, but it could be the way to go. Doc Rivers, sorry, Ski, not your show, so I guess I can say Doc. Um, (laughs) He may, wait, does he make you call him Glenn? Is he one of those? Yeah. Well, <laughs> when we're on at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, he's he's Glenn. He, he could be Doc um, here. Yeah. <laughs> Say what he will about, you know, defense and making progress. Every time it seems to be in a step-up situation, I don't see that progress. I saw them give up 129 to Phoenix the other day. It doesn't show me defensive progress. And the way Boston shoots the basketball – you're scared to death to play against them because they can go on one of those huge 15-2 spurts at any second. So without liking anything really in this game, I would say it, it, the illogical thing is to take the Bucks, guys. I don't know. They take the Bucks. Know that they're going to play hard even without Giannis and Ew. somehow, some way, the NBA will make that game close. It's ugly, but sometimes those ugly bets hit. Um uh, Ski, would, would, you, would you agree? Would you take a flyer on Milwaukee plus 10 and a half? I am not, but I understand what he's saying because, I mean, we've seen that in the NBA time and time again. The team with the star player gets rolled out. All those guys, or, or maybe an extra guy or two, gets an opportunity, and uh, they take advantage. Meanwhile, the other team overlooks them. Um, will the Celtics overlook the Bucks in this game? I guess that's the question. And... I still don't think that they do. Maybe they'll take it a little bit easier, but this is still a Bucks team that beat them last time by double digits. So um, I'll look at it like this. It's the Celtics third game in four nights, probably a little less enthusiastic without Giannis out there, but I still think they'll come with it early. Um, in the first half, 49 and 18 against the spread for the Celtics team. I know we have Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown on the injury report, but as long as one of them is available, I'll trust their defense versus Lillard. Um, and I absolutely trust Drew Holiday versus Lillard. He kind of owns that guy if you go all the way back to Portland, New Orleans. Um, so I'll look at the first half record for the Celtics. I'll look at the Bucks. They're 9, 22, and 2 in the first half on the road. I think that Celtics early is the play, and I'll avoid a backdoor cover like we saw in that uh, Denver game yesterday. Yeah, tough to argue with that. And I want to bring up one graphic, and I'm not going to graphic you guys to death, but there's one that's just like overwhelming here that's pretty tough um so it was eight i think so these are the outside shooting numbers of the last 10 games and i want you to look at on the right side you have the celtics offense so in the last 10 games they're shooting the 37 percent of their shots come from above the break three and they're hitting 43.8 percent of them so they're shooting the most in the nba and hitting them at the highest rate look at milwaukee's defense against those uh three-point shots at the top i mean that is just a miss. Like it, it doesn't get more blatant than that. As far as mismatches, uh, am I going to lay the ten and a half? Though no, um, I was down to play it at minus eight and a half when people were going to be taking flyers on the Bucks. But now with Giannis out and the line only moves two points, I completely understand what Rob Vino's saying. Um, so I'm going to put Boston minus ten and a half up because 
you know, the gun to my head rule on this show. <laughs> gun to my head, that's what I would do. Um, but I, there's no way I'd do it here. I, I would imagine the entire world's going to be taking the Celtics now with Giannis out. And, I mean, it's just reeks of a backdoor cover. Maybe Boston first half minus six. Um, Ski, by the way, I put minus six. There were five and a halfs and six and a halfs open. So I just put minus okay. six. So whatever they could get. Uh, so maybe right. Bo Boston first half makes sense. Uh, so our poll's all over the Celtics here, as you would imagine. What was the final results here when it pops up? I think it was like 60%, 26% or something. So 59%, 32 So community overwhelmingly leaning towards Boston here. So Rob Vino, if you place that bet, you're going to be on your own Milwaukee Island. <laughs> Which, yeah. If you wanted to just isolate Boston, guys, I mean, with the graphic you threw up there, Kyle, Boston team total at home over 117 and a half. It seems too easy. Um, the way they shoot threes, even if they throw Sam Hauser in there, he's good for six threes. Um, it just doesn't matter with them. 117 and a half, like I say, they allowed 129. The Bucks did to Phoenix the other day. Um, so it maybe if you just want to isolate it to Boston, I know Ski had first half as a um, subset bet. And, and maybe team total over 117 and a half is a good way to look as well. Yeah, I'd, actually, one more thing about this game. So the Celtics have been playing excellent defense against the three-point shot, which is what Milwaukee does. And you got the Bucks coming off arguably their best three-point shooting night of the season in Phoenix. They shot like 58%. It was 21 of, 21 of 40. I forget what it was. So it, I think it was like 24 of 40 or something. They shot the lights out. So you got the Bucks coming off uh, an electric three-point shooting night going on the road against an elite three-point defense. So some regression could hit the Bucks three-point shooting in the face as well. There's a lot of moving parts here. Let's go on to the next game. <clears throat> All right. Sacramento at Toronto. Jeez. Anyone want to volunteer to go first on this one? <laughs> Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> uh, Ski, are you taking the points of Toronto here? Uh, you're muted. I, I can't hear him. Can you? No, I can't. My bad. I had lost my screen. My, my computer just like blanked out and I was muted. You're <laughs> but, good now. Uh, I'll go first. Um, This game, I, I mean, first things first, I'll say this. Don't put the graphic up. I just have to mention it. Absolutely not. Will I be laying double digits with the Kings? I mean, I say it time and time again. This is not the kind of team that you do that with. They haven't been playing good basketball lately. They've only covered two of their last six games. I get that the Raptors haven't either. Um, they've covered two of their last 10, but they're off two days rest. And what does that allow you to do? Fix whatever was going wrong. Uh, where I will pivot to for my pick for the show, I will go. I'll go with the under. Uh, best number I see right now, I think is 233 and a half. And for one, you're missing pace without quickly in this game. And the Kings, this is what I'll say about them. Do I trust them consistently long term to play defense? No. Mike Brown begs them for the entire year and they play defense in, in certain pockets. And this is one of those pockets where they have been playing defense. I think they're uh, number three the last five games or somewhere around there. You have Toronto who's 22 and 11 to the under at home. Both teams have been trending under lately. Sack four of their last five, Toronto six of their last nine. I just think the the Raptors struggle to score. I think this game is played slower. And um, I think the Raptors defense will be improved from what we've seen recently. So under 233 and a half was my decision. I like that. And so I think a lot of people are going to look at this game and say, oh, two, two teams that run a fast pace. How can you take an under? But there's two, there's just these two numbers that jump out that point to an under here. These two teams defensively against the fast break, first and fourth in frequency, meaning these are two of the okay. best teams in the league at preventing their opponents from getting out in transition. So, yeah, these teams like to run the fast break a lot, but they're playing a defense that doesn't let you run the fast break. So I, I like that look for an under. Um, something I want to point out here, and this is, I mean, this makes sense if you've been following the Kings this year. Sacramento on the season, 5-15 and 15 against the spread in against bottom 10 offenses, meaning they don't play defense wow. when they play these bad teams. And we've seen it. Every time they're laying a, a, a big number, they don't cover. Uh, so 5-15 and 15 against the spread against bottom 10 offenses. Uh, that being said, there, I'm, I won't touch Toronto. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually going to put a Kings minus 11 graphic under my face disclosure not betting it don't do it but on the show i always give a pick out so that's what i do because i mean it, i think on paper the king should beat the shit out of the raptors and i'm not gonna i can't find one positive angle for toronto i can't find one thing i like 
other than that trend for Sacramento. So I, Sacramento minus 11 or pass, emphasis on the pass. <laughs> Rob. All right, I'll pick up the pieces here with this mess. Um, Toronto has won one game this month, right, guys? Eight losses, one win. Talk We ski talked earlier about dirty dogs, teams that have just let go of the rope. Toronto's a team that's let go of the rope. The injury list is ridiculous. There's nobody on the floor to do anything for them. Um, but just as ridiculous are the Sacramento Kings the other night at home against Memphis having to beg for overtime to get themselves a win. I, they, they barely made it through that game. I think Desmond Bain made a layup late to tie that thing. And, um, you know, I mean, you watch the highlights, all you see is a bunch of, and even watching the game, all you see is a bunch of repetitive screens of Malik Monk dunks. But that doesn't get you covering 11 and a half, which is what they're asked to do here. I will say this. They have to win the game. It's the first of a three-game road trip. They're hanging on by a thread. To a play. If, in fact, they're, well, I guess it's by tiebreaker is what it is. With Dallas, they're tied for the sixth spot and the final playoff spot, not a play-in game. So, you know, you're here. You're going to play Toronto. You're going to then move on and play Washington. And then the third game in the road trip is Orlando. Um, you got to come out of here two and one. So they have to win the game. But again, the question is, will they win by 12? Can you shorten it up and trust Sacramento as a first half team? Probably not. Um, there's not, you know, the odds makers probably priced you out of Sacramento unless you're in the habit of laying ridiculous money line numbers because we only trust that or, or you're finding some way to get one of those um, huge teasers where you could take so much off of the spread. Um, I would say I agree most with what Ski has up, which is under simply because I don't know that it's going to require a lot of scoring out of Sacramento here tonight to win this game. Um, Emmanuel quickly, it was mentioned by one of you guys earlier, is the spark plug to ignite pace for Toronto. And without him, they when he's been out before, it has been different for them offensively, tempo-wise and scoring-wise. So I'd probably lean under, Kyle. You can give me that one under my name. Now. There we go. And I'd lean under, too, by the way. So we, we'd all lean towards the under. Ski, are you actually going to fire on this one, or is this a lean? I, I did play it, and oh, you we did? know Sacramento is your favorite team, so we, we know why you have Nah, nah, nah. Don't even – don't paint me with that brush. <laughs> Do not paint me with that brush. They are not my favorite team. Ski thinks that just because they uh, they beat up on his Lakers one night, and he still hasn't gotten over it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The Lakers can't handle the Kings, man. <clears throat> Now for the game of the night, Utah on the road, on the road in Oklahoma <laughs> City. Um, it, I want to bet the Jazz bad. I want to do it. It's uh, it's probably the uh, of the games I've bet. This is the number one off the list. The one that's like I'm I'm itching to pull the trigger. Somebody, someone want to talk me into Utah plus fifteen and a half? Absolutely not. You have to tell me what is there to like about Utah. Uh, I mean, okay, go ahead, got it. You, I mean, you can tell me, but <laughs> Clarkson out, marketing out, Collins probably not going to be there. Front end of a back to back, four games in six nights. They're not good on the road. What are they, 11 and 22 against the spread? They've only covered one of their last five games. What is there to like about this? The last time the Thunder played the Jazz, Jazz won. So, end season revenge. And the Thunder now have had three days off to get right after their bad against the spread run. They've already been the better offense, defense, and rebounding team. Thunder has double-digit favorites, Kyle. They're 9-1 and one against the spread. They win by like 25 points per game. That's the old Thunder, they don't, That's not the new Thunder. This is this year, this <laughs> season. No, no, I'm talking about the new Thunder, like the last three weeks Thunder. It's the oh, new well, Thunder. Oh, well, you know what? That's why when you get three days off, it gives you time to go practice. Okay, that's fair. everything that was wrong. That's fair. Um, So that, I, I think the Thunder run the Jazz out the gym. I think it starts early, and I don't think it stops. Ski, you're going against your own thing, though. The Thunder defense has collapsed. Unless you're thinking the three days off, they come back to start playing some defense. Absolutely. Because Oklahoma City defensively has just fallen off the map here. And let me pull it up. I couldn't even believe the numbers. I literally went and checked a few sites because I was like, my seat's got to be off here. They can't be that bad. It's bad. So Oklahoma City defensively, uh, so they're 13th in the last five games, whatever. Um, but watch this. Let me go down. Where are my, where are my graphics here? Efficient field, effective field goal percentage in the last 10. 25th against the 24th ranked schedule. So, I mean, these are you got bad teams that are able to score 
on Oklahoma City. And we're talking about laying 15 and a half. There's just no way. Isn't Oklahoma City one and six against the number in their last seven, too? I mean, I guess it's, I get what Ski's saying. Three days off. Three days off is serious. Oklahoma City with two or more days off this year, six and six against the spread. So, I mean, it's not a positive or negative lean there. I don't want to do it because I feel like I'm going to get clowned for putting a jazz graphic under my face after losing. If this is the one you would like to put, the, you know, go head to head on. I would be more than happy. <laughs> you're, you're, you're willing to push the chips in on this one? I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> all in, he said. <laughs> all right, I'll put. I'll do it. Let's do it. I'm not putting this on my website or anything. I don't, I don't. This ain't. This is not counting against my record. But I'll go head to head with you, Ski. Let's do it. Give me my points. I want the points. All right, fifteen. <laughs> All right, uh, Vino. Before you get into what you're leaning towards, how about you break the tie here? Who would you side with? Gun to your head. I can't side with Utah. I just can't. Um, and it's a ton of points. And even if you look at how good OKC has been at home, uh, their average winning margin or scoring margin is, I think, just a shade under fifteen. So again, the odds maker has us. It, this is what puts you in dilemma, right? Do you want to take that many? Do you want to lay that many? Um, if you want to shorten it up, Utah is the absolute worst first half team in the NBA this year, 26 and 42. You can probably get away with Oklahoma City under double digits first half. And if Oklahoma City, when they run people out of the gym, which he thinks they're going to do tonight, they do it from the outset. I mean, this is not a team that waits till the fourth quarter to beat you by 20. If, they, if they're going to run you out by 30 or more, it's going to happen right away. Um, and the three days rest may help. Again, I'm just circling back to these are the last 15, 14, 15 games of the year. And these playoff spots are so significant, especially to a team like OKC, which got tied by Denver last night for the number one seed in the West. It's a winnable game. Um, I always like to say you have to win the winnables. They're going to win this contest. They can win by margin. They've done it time and time again. I get, Kyle, um, you know, the recency, the bad defense. Um, again, maybe it's head coach Dagnall steps in for three days and just gets them a little bit more focused. Maybe they lost their heads for a little bit. They're 65 games into the season. Uh, the defensive numbers had been good up until then. But you can't trust this Utah starting lineup tonight, guys. It, it, they're not even playing it. Keontae George, Chris Dunn, Bryce Sensbaugh, Taylor Hendricks, John Collins, who is probably still scratching his head from where Anthony Edwards landed. Um, it, it's not a starting lineup that's going to do any offensive damage against a team if they're focused and motivated. So I would think the defensive end is all about focus and motivation in this game, Kyle. I would say OKC, okay, but... In my case, because I don't like laying that huge double-digit price, I would take Oklahoma City first half in this contest. I'll give you um, what I see for current right now. I'm seeing uh, nine. So, yeah, I would probably try OKC minus nine first half. OKC first half minus nine. Yep. And look, all right, there's a couple things. So, first, I get, I get trashed because I bet the Jazz a lot. On the season, I'm 14 and 12 against the spread betting the Jazz. But check this out on the other side. I track all my stuff over here. So I am one and six fading the Jazz. So Ooh. I'm, I, I'm mm. getting crushed when I try to go against my Jazz. I know we've lost a lot of bets. People have tailed me and lost bets on the Jazz. We're 14 and 12 betting them. But one and six fading them, by far my least profitable team to fade also. So it's not as, it's not as black and white as you think, man. I, I'm scared to go against these Jazz as well. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip this screenshot right here and tweet it out. Minsky head to head. I'm on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, uh, man, that's an embarrassing one. Uh, all right, Jazz was 15 and a half. Let's do it. Uh, next up, <clears throat> Memphis Golden State. And guys, I'm in on this one. I le I got Golden State at 10, and I like my position. Um, I know that seems crazy. Like, how are you comfortable laying double digits with Golden State? Um, but hold on one sec. Grizzlies. It's not, I think this line's at 11 now, right? Yes. Um, so the, there was a couple things. Um, so w w spots I like to bet Golden State are 
teams that don't have a presence in transition on either side, and that's Memphis on both sides. So that's how you cr uh, crush Golden State is you, you get out, you run the fast break. They struggle to defend it this year, and they also don't have a fast break themselves. So teams that have good fast break defenses and just take the transition game away from the Warriors offense, they also give Golden State problems. So right off the bat, Grizzlies don't have a fast break, and they can't. They don't. Have, uh, they don't play good defense against the fast break either this season. So, um, and I don't have the trends in front of me, but it was um, like Golden State against teams in the bottom five of fast break defenses, like nine and four against the spread. Golden State in the bottom five offenses in fast break, they're like seven and two against the spread or something. I don't have them in front of me, but they had good trends for both. Uh, but also the biggest one. Memphis really struggling to defend the three-point shot above the break. And, and you got Steph Curry back. Um, the fact that he missed a few is skewing the Golden State offensive numbers. They played a much stronger schedule than Memphis recently. Um, you got the Warriors coming. I mean, that home loss to the Knicks with no Randall, no Ananobi. That's embarrassing. I mean, I think it's a, a bounce back spot. I I, I think this, this game has blowout written all over it. And if you guys subscribe to this channel, you know, I, I'm not down to lay 10 points. Like it's nothing. I almost never do that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm in on the Golden State minus 10 and I like it. I don't like what you were saying about uh, them getting out in transition. Um, because I was trusting us. I'm trusting the system and trusting some trends here. And just how I view Golden State. Um, like when they were going on that on that run, it was because they were playing really great defense. And I think they get back to that here tonight um, in a nice bounce back spot. And I have a system that populated. It pretty much says that this total is low for a reason. And if I look even further at the first half, I mean, it's shaded that way. The full game is two, it was what? It was two, there's 219 now. I think that's what that says. And the first half is like 106 and a half. So I was looking towards the under there. A couple of trends, Golden State towards the first half under as a favorite. It's hitting 67.5%, 27 and 13. And Memphis first half under in general has been cashing all year, 47, 19 and two. I do get that, you know, they got Desmond Bain back, et cetera, et cetera. But I just believe Golden State plays really great defense today. And if they're going to get that big lead that you need, Kyle, that's where that's to start in, uh, early. So you said 110, 106 and a half. 106 and a half, my bad. So 106 and a half. Yeah, and um, to Ski's point, uh, this just happened to be fresh in my head because I made a graphic last night. Um, Golden State, Memphis trends, uh, this series is heavily to the under. It's like six and two to the under in their last eight. Don't quote me on that, but it's definitely trends towards the under when these two teams meet. Uh, what about Rob Vino? All this under talk sounds like it's a good time for me to step in, right? And and stop that free train and and tell you guys that I got in on over and oh season long season long trends be damned. Um I'm all about the last two games with Desmond Bain. One was overtime, but you know, Memphis played little defense. And they've got some scoring punch back. Uh, I think the Sacramento game landed 232. The game before with OKC, Kyle, you talked about OKC, bad defense. They kind of kind of snuck Desmond Bain into that game, right? I don't think heading into uh, maybe 30 minutes before, I, I don't remember seeing Desmond Bain listed as coming back that night. But I watched the game in full the other night, always trying to be proactive where these things are concerned, um, because obviously overall numbers are going to be what's looked at most by betters and handicappers. And I just I, I think you can shorten it up uh, to with Desmond Bain back here. Golden State, to me, if you just look at the way the odds makers breaking this game down, the odds makers telling you 116, 104 Memphis in order to get a win. As far as going over a 219 number is concerned, I did happen to get 218 and a half, but it's now 219. Um, to me, that's not unreasonable. For Memphis to get to 104 with Bain back in the lineup, I don't think is that big of a deal. I think Golden State's going to push pace. I mean, obviously, Draymond's the starting center now because they want to run more and more. And when you bring Clay off the bench, it, it, a game like tonight is the kind of night where Clay Thompson probably scores 25 plus. Game against Memphis, kind of meaningless. Um, even if they play good defense, to your point, Ski, I think 104, holding the team to 104 is good defense. I put a lot of faith in Golden State's offense here and in that, um, if one of you guys referred to it, I don't know which, but somebody referred to the loss against the Knicks the other night. Bounce back situations are always a big part of what I do in the NBA. So for me, it wasn't that difficult a decision 
to go ahead and get this game up and over 218 and a half. I'm probably, you know, I'm stepping head first into a lot of SDQL ski, but I'll step in front of the SDQL and try a little bit of over. So you I can mean have the second half. Yeah, right. I was gonna say okay. you both good <laughs> cash. <laughs> so we're room for uh golden. A nice a nice good third third quarter from Golden State. We right? need a fifty there point third a fifty point third quarter from the Warriors and all three of us are happy. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so our the viewers are uh, leaning heavily towards the Warriors here, sixty percent, twenty six percent. So not a ton of people out there, at least that are watching, that are taking the points with Memphis. Next up, Philly at Phoenix. Um, that either you guys want to uh, take the lead on this one? Go for it. I, I'll go, guys, because I actually talked about this on Wager Talk today this morning because it was the first NBA bet I made of the day. And I've been doing a lot of these team totals in the NBA the last 30 days or so. But to me, Phoenix stuck out as a team total here. 115 and a half at the time of the bet, 116. Now, I think this thing keeps teetering back and forth total-wise based on Tobias Harris. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? He's, he's going to play. Um, I think the suspension's over, and, he, and he's going to play. They opened 114 and a half, climbed to 115 and a half, and Ski, I know you do a lot with last five games. And if you just look at these two teams' last five games, you're going to come to the immediate conclusion that there's no pace, there's no points, there's no nothing. How in the world are they going to play over? But when you look at the opposition here, when I went through it all, you know, if the Phoenix point scored in their tempo last five isn't going to overwhelm you. But they only played one opponent, which was Milwaukee on Sunday, who was not in the NBA's top four defensively or bottom uh, top four defensively or bottom five in pace three of the last five games have been against boston or cleveland boston's second best defensive team cleveland's the fourth the other game was against charlotte fifth slowest tempo in the nba and that was a back-to-back -back for phoenix so a lot of this can be i guess i'm justifying a lot of the phoenix stuff right but how, if you look at what they scored they did get to 112 against Boston, despite Boston being a really good defense. They did get to 117 against Cleveland. And then when they got the free run, they got 129 against Milwaukee. Um, they're obviously a much better team when all three of their big guys are back. And for the Sixers, the tempo when they have the opportunity is there with Maxi back, but they haven't had a lot of opportunity, right? Their last five games, or four of them are against Miami, Charlotte, and two versus the Knicks. The Knicks are just... Dribble, 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 play D. Low scoring uh, until they met Golden State the other night. Charlotte, I just talked about slow pace. Miami, slow pace. All that does is make Philadelphia's defense look better than it is. It makes their tempo look slower than it is. And I feel like you put them in this situation with Phoenix on Phoenix's home floor where they average 117 and a half as a home favorite that Things are going to speed up a little bit here tonight. Phoenix has no real answer. First of all, Paul Reed is nobody's answer at center against Nurkic. And from there, there's no real good matchup on the floor for Booker or Durant in this game. So Phoenix fourth quarters have been garbage. Um, the lowest scoring team in the league in the fourth quarter, right? 25 points a game in the fourth. But if you can get to 91 after three against this team you can be a little bit comfortable i honestly think they'll score more than 25 in the fourth year tonight at home so for me guys it was the first bet i made it was the simplest bet i made i had phoenix up and over their team total 115 and a half but now it is 116 I, i'm still good with that so phoenix team total over so i typed under so for a while while he was talking it said under he's on the over so disregard what the graphic said for the first minute where he was talking <laughs> um ski where are you at on this one I like this game a few different ways. Um, first, you know, we haven't had too many props without Prop Beaver. But um, I'm going with Maxi over 28 and a half points. He's had 30 plus, I think, five of his last seven games. And Vino talked about the last five game stats. You know, I look at it every day. Phoenix, I think, is third or fourth worst defensive rated team in that span. So if there's one person on the Sixers team who I trust um, offensively, it's going to be Maxi. I'll, I'll roll with that. And also, I think Phoenix is like, They've allowed a lot of guards to have 30 plus in their last few games too. I wish I had the number in front of me. As far as the game, I will also go with the Sixers. And I have a feeling Kyle's gonna be against me here. No, but I'm with you. Okay. I got cool, Sixers cool, in cool. my pocket. All right, I like to hear that. <laughs> I, the one thing I don't like is 
you know, I do like that it's their first game home off a long road trip. Um, but they've had two days off. So I don't like that. It is the front end of a back to back for the Suns. They are eleven and twenty two against the spread at home. They've only covered are there nine they've only covered nine out of twenty seven games versus competition, greater than fifty five percent win teams. And so I looked at the Sixers. Uh, they've definitely been the better defensive team. And I just, you know how I am. I'm not in the business of laying points that, with teams that can't get stops. So I think Maxi keeps us in the game and keeps us within that plus nine number. Yeah, um, I'm with you on that. Let me get my graphic up on the screen. Uh, I'm holding Philly. I didn't go heavy on it. I didn't crush it, but I think it's the right side. I took, I got it at nine. I was expecting the number to drop. Uh, Because I saw eight and a half, but it looks like you could still get nine. So it's still sitting in the same spot. And I mean, we can go through a bunch of stuff of how the Suns never seem to cover these numbers. And um, obviously there's the aspect of, hey, the Suns have played a really strong schedule. Here they are at home against an inferior team, a very winnable game. But you know how many times I've said that with the Suns and they don't cover? It feels like thousands. We just saw them at home against the Raptors. They won by seven. I was laying seven and a half in that game. They they were just home against the Rockets. They lost. Before that, they played home against the Rockets again. They won by five. So even in these games where it feels like, okay, this is it for the Suns. Like, finally, they're done. They're not playing these tough teams anymore. They're at home against a shitty Sixers team. This is where we see the Suns. They don't show up, man. And trust me, I am... Down, I think four and a half units betting the Suns this year. By far, my least profitable team in the NBA. So you're 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 speaking to somebody who has had his problems with this Phoenix team. Um, but there's two that really push me over the edge. I want to read you off, guys. Two trends here. There's two things that Philadelphia is doing well without Joel Embiid. Both in the turnover department, they're protecting the basketball and they're creating turnovers on defense. Let me read you these Phoenix trends. So. Phoenix against the top five teams in offensive turnover rate. So Phoenix against teams that don't turn the ball over one, six and one against the spread this year. And on the other side, Phoenix against teams in the top five of defensive turnover rate. So against defenses that create turnovers three and nine against the spread. So turnovers are the kryptonite for Phoenix. And whenever they play a team that's good at creating turnovers and protecting the ball, you got to fade them. So I'm good on my Philly plus nine ticket. I think I'm on the right side in this one. Love to hear it. Yep. Me and Ski agree. I would have went head to head with you on that one if you had Phoenix. We would I would have I would have <laughs> clipped it right here. I would have clipped it right here and tweeted it while we were still talking. <laughs> you know, to your turnover. Oh, I was gonna say to your turnover point, Kyle, a lot's been made the last couple of days of, you know, Phoenix's lack of point guard. And it definitely does show up um with Bradley Beal out there not being a true point and not being able to Set guys up. What you two guys did while you were talking was allowed me enough time. When I made this play this morning, I was going to make both plays, full game over and Phoenix over. And I didn't, but listening to both of you guys talk convinced me to push in on full game over 222 and a half as well. If Philadelphia is going to score, this game's going over. Uh, no question about it. And Phoenix does not play defense. Um, I'm in that same boat with, with Ski where you don't trust their D. So both are playing with obvious motivation. Philly's part of a three-team, you know, kind of traffic backup for that sixth and final playoff spot um, with Indiana. And I think it's Miami. And for Phoenix, they're not that far out of getting into the playoffs either and getting out of that playing game. So a lot of motivation, but I just don't trust either defense. You think Phoenix, on the Phoenix side, they have the matchups to exploit. And on the Philly side, again, Forcing turnovers, that was a great point, Kyle, because um, they're a team that does it, and Phoenix is just not a team that protects the ball real well at this point in time. Yeah, that's something I've been um, – I've had success doing this year because in years past, I would look for mismatches, right? Like, oh, Phoenix can't force turnovers and Philly protects the ball. And I'd be like, that's a mismatch. But this year, I've really been looking at results because there's some games where you see a mismatch. Like, for example, in the Bucks celtics game, the Bucks. Uh, the Celtics don't create turnovers, and the Bucks protect the basketball. So you think that's maximum amount of possessions for the Bucks? But Milwaukee on the season against teams in the bottom five of forced turnover rate against defenses that don't force turnovers, they're like three and ten against the spread or something. So like some of those matchups where I, in the past, in years past, I'd be like, oh, this is a mismatch. Sometimes they don't always translate into wins. So I've been focusing on the ones that translate into W's and L's and having some success this year. All right, next up. 
Clips, Suns, and I <laughs> I have a bet on this game. I I can, full disclosure, not a ton of research went into this one. Um, I kind of went with a feeling here. I just, I grabbed um, the Blazers at plus 12. I'm kind of curious to see what these guys are going to say. Uh, Ski, would you co-sign that? I do. The only thing I'll say is I don't like that Simons has been added to the injury report. Mm-hmm. But other than that, Blazers have been playing good basketball lately. They've covered, what, eight of their last 11 games. Clippers have not. They've covered one of their last five. They do have the rest advantage with two days rest. But do we trust them to bounce back here? And I'll, I'll you know, you guys, I'll be a broken record. I'm not laying 12 points with a team who's not playing defense. Clippers' last five games are the third worst defensive rated team. So uh, if we can't trust them to get stops, especially versus a team that's been playing well, how are they going to cover 12 points? So that puts me on the Blazers. Um, also, just want to mention, I think Aiden has a big night. He's been balling lately. I think his points and rebounds might be worth a look as well. Yeah, uh, me too. Uh, I'm on Portland, and did, that, I'm glad to hear Ski's on Portland as well. feel a little more comfortable now because when I did it, I was kind of in the air. Um, the, the main, uh, well, for one, Portland's been playing surprisingly good defense against jump shooters, something the Clippers do a lot of offensively. So that's something. Um, like Ski said, they've been competitive. And I know the fact that Simons might, might not play is a killer, though. I placed this bet about 15 minutes before that got announced. Typical. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It's kind of what we're seeing for Portland recently. Th- yo, they're playing hard. And I always say this. You get, especially in the NBA, but you see it in all sports when teams have kind of quote unquote punted on the season. Front offices can tank and coaching staffs can tank, but the players on the court, they're playing for minutes. They're playing for contracts. They're they're not tanking. It is not in their best interest to tank. It's in their best interest to ensure their future, to ensure the next contract, to ensure a spot on the rotation on next year's team or another team. So the players for Portland that are getting the minutes are playing hard. So I, I I like the way this team this Portland team is playing. Now, if 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 you are betting the Clippers in this one, you're you're going with the hey, like finally the Clips get a chance. Kind of the same spot of the Suns are in. Finally, the, the Clips get a chance to spread their wings and right the ship here. I don't think this is the spot, man. Laying 12 points on the road in Portland against a Portland team that I, what are they seven and three against the number in their last ten? So yeah, I, I think this is the side, and and I'm this isn't a lean. I'm holding a ticket. I'm in on Portland, Rob. Yeah, and it's the first of back-to-backs for these two guys. So if you choose not to play, you can always counter punch, come back the other way. Um, it's real doubtful that the Clips will have the same result in both of these games. They're probably going to lose one against the spread. They're probably going to win one against the spread, um, which I really don't know. The injury situation for Fien- for Portland, excuse me, with Grant already down. And if you don't get Simons, that would bother me a little bit here, um, certainly on the Portland side. And it isn't it interesting – that DeAndre Ayton, Ski said he's been balling lately, and he attributes it to no longer sleeping on an air mattress. How crazy is that? He like, I got that? off my air mattress. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He got off of an air mattress, got a new mattress, and now he's playing fantastic. So maybe more guys should get off of air mattresses. I don't know. Uh, or maybe he's the only guy. Why was he it. sleeping on an air mattress? Yeah. Like, doesn't he have. He just got a contract. <laughs> He Buy a bed, en- man. <laughs> enough money. There was he was catching a whole lot of flack for that um, because mattresses he could go buy. You know, mattress Mac would probably give him the best mattress right. he has <laughs> if he wanted to make the phone call. Um, I don't trust the Clippers, though, guys. I mean, I- I'm in that boat of Clippers minus this amount of points. They can be lazy. They can be careless. Um, Again, I'd be repetitive, but these playoff positions are a big deal to a lot of these teams, and obviously the Clippers are playing fun, but it doesn't mean you have to win by this amount. Chauncey Billups had a lot of positive quotes about his team and the way they're playing right now. When you watch him the other night, I mean, Simons came close to tying that game with a three at the end. He was basically unstoppable. Um, So I'd like to have him here if I knew he was going to play, and if he does get listed in, I could probably jump in on Porton. Because I think they're the one team in this game that you can guarantee 48 minutes of effort out of. And Kyle, to your point about tanking, not tanking, the organization wants to tank, the players don't want to tank. I think it's clearly evident in that Utah starting lineup that I read off that Utah really, the management has no interest in winning the game. So let's throw these five out there. 
Um, but the five that are out there are like, hey, we're on the floor for 30 tonight. Let's go. So it, it is kind of a uh, thin, fine line to have to walk here with who's, you know, a name recognition as far as starting lineups are concerned. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've always said that. And I mean, obviously, if the talent's not there and especially the, 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 the detriment to it would be the talent isn't there. And also, how many minutes have these guys run together in an actual game? So in experience as well. Um, but as far as effort, you would think it actually, in some cases, you would see more of an effort from these guys. Um, so 58-30% um, in favor of Portland. So community is leaning towards Portland there. Um, let's do a community parlay. And Ski, there's there's just so much pressure on you. People are already counting their money from this. <laughs> Ski, I, don't, I, I don't know how this dude just every time he's on the community parlay hits. Oh, did you see uh, RC finally got one? I did, I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad he got off the snipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was rejoicing about it. <laughs> so we'll go, uh, I guess we got to go, pay, you know what? It's greater than double digits. So we'll go Pacers minus 10 and a half. Did they vote? They voted for the Heat. Um, mm. Bucks, Celtics, they voted for the Celtics. So we'll go Celtics minus 10 and a half. We're, I'm, I'm using double digits as the cutoff. Anything above double digits. Uh, Kings, Raptors, Kings minus 11 and a half. All right. What is the uh, first leg of this community parlay? Cast your votes. Um, while they're voting, you guys want to, Rob, you want to tell them where they could check out your stuff? Absolutely. Wagertalk.com is the website where all my work is um, featured. It can be found there each and every day. It, you know, it, for those who are watching Kyle's show right now that have not yet become members to wagertalk.com. If you just go by and put your email address in, you'll get free, F-R-E-E, -E, free access to all the video content and written content provided every day by the handicappers over there at wagertalk.com. So nothing to lose there as far as if you like what Kyle's show is, uh, it gives you each and every day. You can find shows just like it in other sports over at wagertalk.com. All my, If you're interested in selection packages, all my selections are also available at wagertalk.com with the college basketball tournaments all up and running right now. They'll be up and loaded quite frequently. So wagertalk.com. Cool. And Ski, I mean, I think, I'm think i pretty sure everyone watching knows where, because <laughs> he's here every Wednesday. But Ski, for those of you who don't know where to find your stuff. Uh, on my, I mean, you can find everything on Twitter, X, at Ski Profit. And my YouTube is the same, Ski Profit. I'll be on in the morning tomorrow with Mr. Ravino. Um, we'll talk about the tournament right there. So uh, we will. We won't get the first couple games that start at nine a.m., but uh, we'll get through the rest. So at Ski Profit for everything with me. And his show on YouTube is one thirty p.m. Eastern time, ten thirty a.m. Pacific time. So about a couple two and a half hours before this one starts. Uh, so the first leg of the community parlay is Celtics minus ten and a half. All right, Ski, starting off with. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I could see a back, you getting backdoored on that one. Celtics minus yeah. 10 and a half. Um, all right, let's go with the second. Oh, you capper is in the comments. Look at him. He's strutting back there out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm we got, for my guy. Yeah, yeah. He needed it. He needed it. Thunder minus 15 and a half. Uh, Grizzlies, Warriors, Warriors minus 11. So many monster spreads in this one. Uh, 76ers money line because it is in single digits and Clippers Blazers plus 12 and a half. All right. So cast your vote for the second leg and then we'll do one more poll to finish it out. And by the way, guys, we're doing um, on this channel, we got our March Madness special, which is 1030 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So one an hour and a half before March Madness starts. We'll be live with the, the normal people I have fun for college basketball. So we'll go through all the games. Um, we'll be, probably be right when the first game tips off is probably when we're ending. So it'll be like we should – we're trying to time it up just like that. So if you want to join, see you tomorrow morning on that. Damn, it looks like they're going to put Thunder minus 15 and a half. So not only am I going head-to-head -head with Ski, I'm going head-to-head -head with the community here. They're doing the right thing, man. <laughs> never, <laughs> never have I seen never have I needed the uh this Utah team more than right now. <laughs> I'm putting that up on Twitter and everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up and live with that Utah plus 15 and a half tonight. Let let it leave it all out there. Um so we got uh Thunder minus 15 and a half is the second leg. 
So we got Celtics minus 10 and a half, Thunder minus 15 and a half. This is a crazy one. Um, and the second place finishers were Heat money line, Pacers minus 10 and a half, Warriors minus, Jesus. All right, so Heat money line, Pacers minus 10 and a half, Warriors minus 11, and Blazers plus 12, oh, plus 12 and a half. All right, so first and second place from this poll will finish out the community parlay. First and second place. Oh, System Plays is in the chat. You got an NHL pick for us? Man, it's been hot in the NHL. That guy with the SP in his logo. Man, and just thinking about uh, being in a casino, it's like all the professional sports just get pushed to the side now. I was trying to find like some NBA games are over there in the right corner with the hockey games right next to it. <laughs> and then the main stage is college basketball. Of course. Yeah, I mean, we, had, we almost had 1,400 people in here watching. This will be the last NBA show nice. that gets those kind of numbers until after – until. Actually, maybe right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we might get a little bit of bounce back if people didn't go broke over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's uh, the NBA kind of slows down a little bit until the, uh, after the tournament slows down. All right, it looks like it's going to be Heat Money Line. S dot. How many times? How many accounts did you log in and vote yeah. with, man? We're gonna have to double check that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to pull out the uh, break out the IP addresses and get to the bottom of this. S dot voting multiple times. All right, so we got Heat Money Line and Blazers plus twelve and a half. Can you break out a sports book, please, Andy? Or Prop Beaver? Yeah, could you break it out? Heat Money Line, Blazers plus twelve and a half. Prop Beaver is getting us the odds on it right now. Let me know when you're ready. It's it's Celtics minus ten and a half. Thunder minus fifteen and a half. Heat money line. Blazers plus twelve and a half. I'm gonna guess plus seven oh one. Not even close. Plus thirteen sixty one. Oh ski. Uh can I can I get an endorsement on Maxi from Prop Beaver and maybe Aiden? Oh, uh uh Prop Beaver Ski wants to know what you think about his Maxi over points. Oh, Prop Beaver posted his love over it, PRA. Love it, love it, love so it. yeah. And what was the other one? Aiton? Yeah, Aiton points, rebounds. Aiton points and rebounds. He went like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's his exact face. He went. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I'll take the one that uh, the one he did endorse. Yep. Uh, all right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Make sure you bet responsibly tonight. Uh, yeah, see you in the morning for the March Madness show. Rob and Ski, thanks for joining. Get you guys back. Well, Ski, I'll see you back on next Wednesday. Uh, Rob, we'll get you back on soon, man. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, guys. Later.